Okay, so for the second right, tutorial that we will be looking at, we're going to look at the next two right, uh, parts of the tracks that we'll be listening to, right? and then we'll be answering the questions that will follow right after the lecture and the conversation as well. right? Okay, so to begin with, uh, we'll start with track four, which would be about a lecture on environmental science. Um, that a professor would be going through right on the topic of global climate change and uh, the place would be Alaska right and so we'll be talking about the vegetation there how temperatures have changed there and also how shrubs or small plants have been able to grow there right and how tundra or uh, permafrost right the uh, the uh, how frozen right the place would be but despite all that right despite the temperature changes how uh, vegetation or shrubs have been able to grow there so we'll learn about that as well right as we uh, learn about uh, the vegetation in the Ar arctic area right and so we'll be learning about some of the details uh, what microbes are as well right some of the how uh, they are able to grow uh, taking uh, nutrients from the soil so we'll take a look at that as well and so let's listen to the lecture right uh, before we can answer the questions that we have right okay so the first track we'll be playing would be track four listen to part of the lecture in an environmental science class
Okay, so that would have been the first track, right, that we would have listened to, right? And so the professor would have talked about how the shrubs are able to grow in the Arctic, right, despite the cold temperature, right? Uh, because it has a shallow root system, it's able to grow, right, even in permafrost, right? So the uh, the uh, the soil, right, or the uh, the cold sort of ice, right, won't get in their way of growing as well. And also they have microbes, right, which will produce nitrogen, which would allow the, them to absorb nutrients from the soil more efficiently, so they'll be able to grow as well. So, uh, and, uh, so we'll be talking about these, right, as we go over the questions that we have. And so let's get started with the questions and we'll go over them right one, one by one that we have uh, on here. And so number 12, right, uh, we'll be asking us about what the pub, uh, what the lecture would be about, right? So what is the lecture mainly about? And uh, here the answer would have been A, right? And so what are some of the factors that have allowed the increased growth of shrubs in Arctic Alaska, right? So despite the high, uh, despite the low temperature, how are they able to grow? So we would have found out that they have a shallow sort of root system allowing them to grow, right? Uh, despite the coldness in the soil, right? Without anything getting uh, on their way, uh, 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 in, even in the permafrost, right? So they'll be able to grow. And the other part would have been they're able to absorb nutrients from the soil efficiently due to microbes that they have, right? So those two would have been the factors that would have been involved with the increased growth of the shrubs in the Arctic Alaska, right? That we would have taken a look at. And uh, so for number 13, what are those two features that would have allowed them to grow well in the Arctic regions, right? And so as we have talked about a little bit, they are able to absorb nutrients from the soil efficiently. There are microbes that allow them to absorb nutrients, right? And the second part would be, ironically, their shallow root system would allow them to grow without, uh, without being prevented by the permafrost or the cold or ice, right, in the soil, so they would be able to grow even though they have shallow roots, right, so the, that will be one advantage, right, that they would have as well. And then uh, for number 14, right, uh, what is one reason for the increase in shrubs growth in Arctic Alaska, right, and so again, a little bit of repetition of what we've been talking about over and over again, but uh, increases in ground temperature have led to increased microbial activity, allowing them to uh, absorb more nutrients, right, in the soil as well. But the ground temperature, right, uh, the increase in it would have changed or uh, influenced the microbial activity and therefore would have allowed them to take in more nutrients and allow them to grow, right, further in the Arctic Alaska, right, in Arctic Alaska. Uh, and number 15, right, the next question we have, uh, why are nutrients in the soil not carried away during spring runoff, right? So when the snow melts right in the spring, why would, it, why would the nutrients not be carried away? And so that would have been the question that the student would have asked, right, at some point, and professor's answer would be, 
that uh, most nutrients are not in the area of the soil most affected by the runoff, right? And so when there would be melting of the snow, since the nutrients are not in those places where uh, they would be melted away, they would be in other places, right? And so they would be prevented from being uh, run up or melted away by the, uh, by the uh, meltdown of the snow, right? Okay, so uh, the next question that we have, right? Uh, what does the professor mention? Why does the professor mention shrub expansion into other environments such as semi-arid uh, grassland? So here, uh, they, he, he was trying. She was trying to show how it would to suggest that new shrubland cannot convert back to tundra. So uh, they would be spreading to new environment, right? Rather than coming, uh, when the, rather than coming back, or converting back to tundra, they would be expanding to new environments. And so that was the purpose why she would have mentioned that, right? And so the final track that we have, right? We'll listen to a short portion of what the track would have been about, and we'll try to answer the question that we have for number seventeen. Okay, let's play track number five and see what we'll be about. So uh, why would she say what, what's the puzzle, right? Warmer temperatures should lead to greater growth, right? Right, so she's asking a question, right? A rhetorical question or something that uh, she's trying to ask a question through the question, right? And so uh, she's trying to sort of state that the phenomenon, right, uh, the the uh, what is happening at the moment is actually more complex than it, it appears, right? That what's the puzzle, right? What, what is beyond this or that uh, what would be the actual factor that would have caused the uh, increase in growth, right, rather than the uh, assumed, right, assumption, right? And so what's the puzzle, right, that it actually is more complex, right, than it actually seems, right? And so C would have been the answer we would have found for number 17, right? Okay, uh, so let's listen to the next track, right, that we have. And the track will be talking about uh, it will be a conversation between the librarian and the student. So in this uh, in this audio file that we'll be listening to, uh, the librarian would be trying to help the student who has to return his book, right? But he would need it for his senior thesis. So she's trying to come up with an alternative for him so that he can be photocopying parts of the book so that he can be using could be using it for his senior thesis while another professor will be taking it uh, and returning it back after his own research, right? So we'll listen to the conversation, right? Uh, the audio track that will be on their conversation and we'll try to answer the questions as we follow along. Okay, so the next track would be track six and uh, we will be starting.
Okay, so the woman, right, the library would have resolved the problem for the student, right, allowing him to uh, photo, uh, offering him, uh, offering to photocopy parts of the book, right, that he would require for his uh, own research, right, for his senior thesis that he's writing. And so uh, let's listen, uh, let's enter the questions as we follow along, right, that we have here in, uh, in, our, in our book that we have, right? So uh, what are the speakers mainly discussing here? Do we remember what they would have been talking about, right? So they would have been talking about a lot of the policies that the library would have had, right? And so, uh, but majorly the student, right, would have wanted to uh, uh, used the book, right, that he would have borrowed, that uh, he was trying to write for his senior thesis, right, he would have gotten a letter from school that he has to return the book, and so he was trying to get advice from the librarian about this, uh, it, about this policy, about this uh, sort of notification that he had received, right. Okay, so for number 19 that we have, what does the woman offer to do for the men? And so she was, uh, she was kind enough, right, she was, uh, uh, she was uh, helpful enough that she uh, offered to photocopy chapters of the book that she would he would require to be writing the senior thesis for him, right? So while he uh, while he uh, returns the book, he can be using the photocopy version, right? And then uh, for number 20, what is the woman trying to explain when she mentions students who have lost their borrowing privileges? And so uh, she's trying to let him know that he he has to borrow, he has to return the book, right? For those of the students who haven't returned their book, right, they have lost their borrowing privileges. And so she's trying to warn him what will happen if he chooses not to return the book, right? So uh, that will sort of have been uh, the uh, precaution or uh, the wording that uh, she would have given, right? And what would happen if he doesn't receive, return it, right? So uh, letting him know the rules, right? Okay, uh, number 21, right, would have been, how does the man probably feel at the end of the conversation? Uh, so by the end, he will feel relieved, right? He will feel thankful, he will be appreciative that the woman was trying to help him, right? And that the problem was resolved. He would have the photocopy version as well as being able to, uh, and, and then be able to return the book as well. So everything would be resolved, right? And uh, as, as uh, and when the sociology professor is done using the book, he'll be able to borrow the book once more, right? For his senior thesis as well, right? Okay, so the, for the last uh, question that we have, let's listen to track seven, and then we'll go over the question that we have. So we'll be playing track seven. So why is she saying, right? Why is she saying, uh, are, are we still asking for you to bring the book back, right? She's repeating the questions or repeating in the form of the question, what is happening to him or what is being asked of him, right? So she's repeating again, right? The, uh, the nature of his problem, uh, uh, putting into her own words, right? Into a question, what he's going through to make sure that she understands, right? The man's problem. She, she's mirroring his situation, mirroring his words, right? Is this what is happening to you, right? He's try, she's trying to confirm, right? What is happening to him, right? To make sure that she understands what the man's problem is, right? Uh, and so this would be the, this will mark the end of the second tutorial, right? And so we'll be covering this in class. Uh, and the weekly videos would be, uh, the listening activity videos would be uh, updated, uploaded. So uh, please stay in tune for that, right? And so we'll be trying to take notes, right? As we listen to the lectures, right, uh, in class and we'll be answering the questions, right? This will be a preview and also a review that you could be using for your uh, self-study as well.